Hello Grade 11s and welcome back to this topic on quantitative aspects of chemical change. So far in this topic, we have had a look at more relationships and chemical equations. Let us consider the reaction between iron and sulfur. Here is the balanced equation for the reaction. The equation is balanced, so the ratio in which iron reacts with sulfur is 1 is to 1. This means that for every one mole of iron used, one mole of sulfur will react with it. So, if we consider these two samples of reactants, they will react in a 1 is to 1 mole ratio. Unless we have a perfectly equal number of moles in each beaker, one of the reactants will be used up before the other. The substance that gets used up first is known as the limiting reagent because it is this substance that limits the amount of product formed. Any other reactants left over once the limiting reagent is used up are known as the substances in excess. Chemical equations and the use of the mole ratio in the equation can help us determine which substance is the limiting reagent and which is the substance in excess. Let us take this reaction between iron and sulfur as an example and do a calculation problem. Part A of the question says calculate which of the two substances is in excess if 20 grams of iron and 14 grams of sulfur are reacted together in the following reaction. Let us start by filling in the information given. We have 20 grams of iron and 14 grams of sulfur. Then we confirm that the equation is balanced and then fill in the mole ratio. Let us then calculate the number of moles of each of the reactants using the equation N equals small m over big M. Now we need to compare the mole ratio of the two substances with each other using the balanced equation. The ratio of iron to sulfur is 1 is to 1. This means that for every one mole of iron that reacts, one mole of sulfur will be required. We calculated that we had 0.36 moles of iron to start with. Let us use the mole ratio to determine how many moles of sulfur would be required to react completely with the iron. 0.36 moles of iron would require 0,36 moles of sulfur to react completely. But if we go back to the original equation, we can see that whilst 0,36 moles of sulfur is required to react completely with the iron, we actually started with 0,44 moles of sulfur. So, 0,36 moles of sulfur is required but we have 0,44 moles of sulfur. So there is more sulfur than we need. So sulfur must be the substance in excess. This makes iron the limiting reagent. Part B of the question says determine the mass of the substance in excess left over at the end of the reaction. We will start by determining the number of moles of the substance in excess left over at the end of the reaction. We take the 0,44 moles of sulfur that we started with and subtract the 0,36 moles used in the reaction. This leaves us with 0,08 moles of sulfur left over at the end of the reaction. Let us now convert this number of moles to mass using the equation N equals small m over big M. We rearrange the equation and substitute our values in. We get an answer of 2,57 grams. So there is 2,57 grams of sulfur left over at the end of the reaction. So we have seen in this worked example how we use the mole ratio in an equation to determine which substance is in excess and which substance is the limiting reagent. Let us do another example. Part A of the question says 20 grams of magnesium and 9,6 grams of oxygen are reacted together in the following equation. 
Calculate which of the two substances is in excess. Let us start by filling in the information given. We have 20 grams of magnesium and 9,6 grams of oxygen. Then we confirm that the equation is balanced and then fill in the mole ratio. Let us then calculate the number of moles of each of the reactants using the equation N equals small m over big M. Now we need to compare the mole ratio of the two substances with each other using the balanced equation. The ratio of magnesium to oxygen is 2 is to 1. This means that for every two moles of magnesium that reacts, one mole of oxygen will be required. We calculated that we had 0,82 moles of magnesium to start with. Let us use the mole ratio to determine how many moles of oxygen would be required to react completely with the magnesium. 0,82 moles of magnesium would require 0,41 moles of oxygen to react completely. But if we go back to the original equation, we can see that whilst 0,41 moles of oxygen is required to react completely with the magnesium, we actually started with 0,3 moles of oxygen. So, 0,41 moles of oxygen is required, but we only have 0,3 moles of oxygen. So we do not have enough oxygen to react completely with the magnesium. This makes oxygen the limiting reagent and magnesium the substance in excess. Part B of the question says, determine the mass of the substance in excess left over at the end of the reaction. We will start by determining the number of moles of the substance in excess left over at the end of the reaction. Before we do this, we must determine how many moles of magnesium were used up in the reaction. Oxygen is the limiting reagent and is used up entirely in the reaction. We had 0,3 moles of oxygen at the start. The mole ratio of magnesium to oxygen is 2 is to 1. If all 0,3 moles of oxygen is used up in the reaction, then 0,6 moles of magnesium will be required. So, 0,6 moles of magnesium is used up in the reaction. We take the 0,82 moles of magnesium that we started with and subtract the 0,6 moles used in the reaction. This leaves us with 0,22 moles of magnesium left over at the end of the reaction. Let us now convert this number of moles to mass using the equation N equals small m over big M. We rearrange the equation N equals small m over big M and substitute our values in. We get an answer of 2,57 grams. So there is 2,57 grams of magnesium left over at the end of the reaction. Now that we have seen the concept of substances in excess and limiting reagents in theory, let us now have a look at this concept practically in the lab. Let us do an experiment to determine which reactant is the limiting reagent and which reactant is the substance in excess. We will react magnesium and oxygen together. We'll start by putting a lid on the empty crucible and measure the mass of both of them together. The mass of both together is 35 grams. Let's remove any oxidation of the magnesium strip by rubbing the strip with a cloth. Next, we place the magnesium into the crucible and measure the mass of the crucible, lid, and magnesium. The mass of the crucible, lid, and magnesium together is 37 grams. Let us fill in this value on the table. We can then subtract the second value from the first value to determine the mass of the piece of magnesium used. The mass of the magnesium is 2 grams. 
Now let us place the crucible onto a clay triangle. We heat the crucible gently at first and then more vigorously. Now that the reaction is complete, let us measure the mass of the crucible, lid and product inside now that the reaction is complete. The mass of the crucible, lid and product, which is magnesium oxide, together is 39 grams. Let us fill in this value on the table. We can determine the mass of the oxygen used in the reaction by subtracting the mass of the magnesium from the mass of the magnesium oxide. The mass of the oxygen used up is 2 grams. This is the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. We can now use the values on the table to determine which of the reactants is in excess and which reactant is the limiting reagent. We started with 2 grams of magnesium. 2 grams of magnesium is equal to 0,082 mole. So from the mole ratio, this should have produced 0,082 mole of magnesium oxide. We see that 4 grams of magnesium oxide was made. We divide by the molecular mass and we find that 0,071 moles of magnesium oxide was produced. So only 0,071 moles of magnesium must have reacted. That is equal to 1,725 grams. So magnesium is in excess and oxygen is the limiting reactant. By subtraction, the excess magnesium is equal to 0, 0,275 grams. That's all for today, grade 11s. Make sure to attempt the task video at the end of this series. You can also find out more information on the topic at www.mindsearch.co.za forward slash learn. Join me in the next lesson when we study explosions and airbags and how they relate to chemical equations. Until then, goodbye.